Quick testing here. Can you hear me through the webinar? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. You all set? Perfect. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our eLotus webinar today. My name is Donna, and I will be your host and your moderator for today's class. Here at Lotus Institute of Integrative Medicine, we are the leading CU provider offering the largest selection of online courses for acupuncturists. We are dedicated to the preservation of TCM wisdom because the best kind of knowledge is shared and passed on to create the best patient experience. And we're so glad to have you guys join us today. A little housekeeping before we get started, what you are seeing on your screen. On the top left-hand corner is the, is the video feed, and to the right of the video feed is the PowerPoint for today's class. There are lecture note handouts available for download, and these handouts are for both part one and part two. So if you're joining us tomorrow, then you don't need to download a new set of notes. And there are two downloads. One is six slides to a page, and the other is two slides to a page. So you can choose whichever one that you prefer. Now on the bottom, you'll see two boxes. The box on your left is the chat room. And here in the chat room is where you can connect with your colleagues who are also attending today's webinar live. If you see an old friend and you want to private chat with them, you may do that by clicking on the menu button. If you see right now in the chat room, there's a few horizontal lines and an arrow pointing down. That's the menu icon. Click on that and you can start, select who you'd like to start a private chat with. If you have any technical issues and you would like to talk to myself, the moderator, or Sam, our tech, then you can start a chat with the host and then we will bring you into our own little private chat. And to the right of this chat room is information about today's webinar, important information such as CEUs, when things are due, such as that, as well as upcoming, inform upcoming webinars and events that we are having. All right, and if you experience any technical issues during today's webinar, such as slowing, skipping, or stopping, the first thing that you want to do is check your internet connection. That is the most likely, the most likely the culprit. A lot of times people are using a wireless connection and the wire and wireless is very up and down. You never know what you get. So we if you only have wireless connection, we recommend sitting closer to your router. And if you have an Ethernet cord so that you can connect to the internet directly, we highly recommend that to get the most juice from your internet. And if you still are having issues, please private chat with our tech and he'll be happy to help you. All right, so there are we have three groups with us today. The first group is our Watch It Free group. These, this group you have you are you get to attend today's class for free. It does not include the two week viewing, or the the two week viewing or the CEUs. And I would like to say thank you to Evergreen Herbs at this time for helping to sponsor the Watch It Free promotion that we have. Thanks to them, we're able to provide all these free seats. And at the end of the today, they will also be sending you guys some an email with uh, some with free with a promotion so that you guys can take advantage of. So check look out for that email. Our second group is the paid group, and our watch a free group. You are welcome to promote to either group two or group three, which is the goal pass, and I'll talk about that later. The second group is the paid group, and you get access for today's class. As long as you join today's class, you do get CEUs, and you also get the two week viewing. And finally is our third group, our Gold Pass members, which they get all of our webinars for free. And you get to, as long again, if you stay for today's class, you get the CEUs, live CEU credits, or if you want to watch this class at a later time, if you something came up, you want to watch it later, you can earn distant learning CEUs as well. And you have access to the recording of this class as long as you are a Gold Pass member. And we'll also have something special for all of our for everyone today to become a Gold Pass member, as well as a special raffle at the end. Someone here today will win a one month Gold Pass membership for free. So make sure to stay for the entire class to be eligible. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Body mapping acupuncture technique for fast pain relief, part one, with Cole Magbanwa, who started learning holistic medicine in 1991. He studied with doctors from a variety of medical traditions, including Chinese, Korean, Ayurvedic, and Himalayan while traveling around the world. He graduated from the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine in 1997. He has worked in a busy public health clinic, private practice, and volunteer clinics using the body, body mapping acupuncture technique during the last 20 years. He was faculty at the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine for six years and served as clinical supervisor, herbal dispensary manager, and teaching faculty, sharing his unique style of acupuncture. He teaches seminars and gives lectures on acupuncture, Chinese medicine, and nutrition around the world. 
and he is currently in private practice in Portland, Oregon. It's such a joy to have him join us this weekend, so let's go ahead and give him a big warm welcome. Thank you, Donna. Covering body fast pace. Okay, so good thing we're going to be starting with some basics. Uh, I will move through the basics. Okay. So here's the, our image. Uh, body mapping acupuncture is a term I'm using to describe this type of acupuncture that is distal point in nature, meaning points away from the local area. If you're familiar with Tan and Tung points, that's kind of what it's all about. Uh, and we're using basically what I call reflexes in these areas. And those reflexes affect areas that we're trying to uh, treat, whether it's pain or dysfunction, um, nerve symptoms, it could be a, a skin irritation, a broken things, bones, a fractures, all kinds of things can be treated this way, even internal organ, which we'll get to uh, this weekend as well. So here's our basic chart. This is kind of my idea of where the actual lines and dots are of acupuncture channels. So uh, this chart went through many rev um, revisions and it's come to this where I think these are bands. We'll cover this more in the future, but we're gonna continue through this and imaging and how to pick points, how to find points, how to diagnose points, how to treat. And then we're gonna cover certain areas of the body. So we're gonna start in the head and cover all the possible problems we could have with head, whether it's teeth or eyes or ears or nose or sinus, EENT basically, throat. Then we're gonna do neck and all the channels around the neck, all the areas possible. Upper back, all those areas that are possible. Um, and then chest, low back, that gets complicated. We'll do a, a, a lengthy demonstration on uh, palpation for that probably tomorrow. And then uh, abdominal, so there's a hara type of, uh, if nobody knows what that is, it's kind of the C of the abdomen. So we'll, there's zones there which are, which are in the book also, we'll be covering that and the release points for those. Um, and then some special things like heel pain, plantar fasciitis, a little bit of neuropathy, uh, knee problems, uh, that kind of thing. So, and we'll see what questions come up and move on from there. Great. So, first things first, here's the back side of the chart. Do we happen to have a, a large chart around uh, that we can show really quick? Um, so there's a laminated version of this. Thank you, Colin. Very good. So there's a laminated version of this chart that we were just seeing. Here's the front and here's the back. So this is kind of a handy thing to have in the office. You can refer to it. You can show it to patients, sometimes explaining to patients um, what we're doing, where we're going. It can also be diagnostic. A patient can go, it hurts right there. Then you kind of know what channel you're on. That could be used diagnostically as well. Kind of handy to have a bigger version of that on the wall, so you can also point to it. It's also fairly visually attractive to patients. They kind of, lines and dots are just a kind of a jumble, but this is very color coordinated, I guess, if we will. And the colors are all based on the five element colors. So green, liver, gallbladder, right, et cetera, on we go. So kind of handy to have this. This also, this chart also has the, all of our images that I like the most. Um, 
on the this version of the chart, uh, on the back, I actually give you some reminders on here. We'll talk about that later, about which channel relationship to use with which imaging system we're using. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. I just wanted to have these right up in front so we could see them. I can keep this for a while. Thanks. And so on we go. So what is body mapping acupuncture technique? It is a simplified distal point method. There are a few basic images which we just showed you. We'll, we'll cover those in detail. And there are a few channel relationships. So for those of you familiar with the TON points and the TON system of balancing, uh, there are many channel relationships. And to me, that got a little bit uh, confusing. So um, through lots of practice uh, from 95 is when I first saw Richard Tan, uh, I decided that uh, I needed to um, there may be a, a more simplified way and so this is what I'm going to share with you today and tomorrow is is kind of what I think is a simplified way to get very highly effective um, treatments and based on those relationships uh, it kind of led me to an anatomical correspondence system so and that's really what I'm talking about with this body mapping is really we're mapping the body on opposite sides and we're going to cover this in in detail muscles, bones, anatomical correspondences in different areas. Um, and, you know, some of the things uh, aren't exactly mapped very well and some are mapped extremely well. And so we'll talk about which ones are better and worse and which ones seem to be more effective or not. But um, use, very useful things. Should get, we w and we're, we're going for immediate results uh, with this technique. So we're looking for instantaneous reactions, whether it's pain relief, ideally if there's pain involved, but it could be range of motion increase. It could be um, less numbness, right? It could, be, uh, it could be a number of things that change, but an immediate chance. Sometimes the patients are not very connected with their problem, so we'll feel the change in their tissue. So it'll be tight and ropey on their erector muscles next to the spine, and we put the points in that treat that, and it loosens right up, and the flexibility comes back, and the patient might or might not notice it, but we can tell, and so we go, oh, that's a lot more relaxed. That's great. So it's a little bit subjective, but at the same time, hopefully our palpation skills are good enough to, to notice these things. Um, some of the features of this are uh, immediate relief of pain and dysfunction, being numbness, tingling, uh, skin irritation, uh, it could be rash, um, swelling, all kinds of things can, can get uh, treated here. Um, quickly diagnose and treat pain anywhere. So again, with the chart, patients can, uh, can t if they can point to it, basically I tell my patients, if you can point to it, I can treat it. Um, if they can't point to it, well then we don't know what we're treating, right? So, th so that's kind of the goal is to get them to like, and sometimes they're kind of like, well, it just kind of hurts everywhere. But we're really looking for like, use one finger, you know, and they might point to five locations. Well, then we're treating five spots. That's fine. Uh, and then on off we go. It gets more complicated, but that's okay. Around the shoulder, for example, lots of, lots of different channels going on there. Um, but but if, they can, if they can find the spot, then we can correlate the channels here, and then we can find our location down here and uh, find our spot, uh, palpate it, look for tender spots, needle that. Should get an immediate change. So that, that's really what we're going for. Uh, so it's a quickly diagnose. Once you're familiar with it, quick diagnose, quick treat. Um, there's not a lot of confusion with which channel we're going to pick because some channels uh, relationships are used uh, on one of the images and the other ones used on the others. Again, we're going to get more into detail on that. Most of my patients I treat without disrobing, um, which means I don't, we don't take a lot of clothes off. Most patients are treated supine on tables, so they're lying face up, very relaxed, pillow under their knees to get a nice curve where their knees are relaxed and, and, and blood flow is easy as comfortable as we can get them. Sometimes we use recliners, also a very comfortable position for people who have back pain that hurts if they lie flat. Um, but uh, pretty much if they can, we can get to their elbows down and knees down, we can pretty much do everything. Um, there are hip and low back things where I really do like points in the shoulder, so I mostly tell patients to wear loose, baggy clothing, uh, tank tops preferably for women, um, men too. Uh, we can roll short sleeves up and, and get to things. It's a little easier with a tank top, too, cause tank top though because there's more access to that back of the shoulder, which is very useful for treating the hip, so we'll get a little more to that. Very good. So... For me, uh, personally, I've been doing this for uh, 20 years in this particular method, and uh, these points and uh, systems are kind of coming out of the Tung family style. Uh, also, Richard Tan was very great with, with his kind of 
synthesizing, organizing, and able to sort of crack the code, if you will, of the tune points and figure out the theory that is sort of behind them. So that's really the great addition that, that for me, that Dr. Tan did. It was, he gave us the theories. Um, and, um, and so we owe a lot of gratitude. Um, so see his books for further information. Uh, lots of Tung books out there. Uh, further information, uh, Dr. Young is a great um, series of books. Um, and then the band theory. So band theory literally is the bands of channels versus lines and dots. So a band meaning uh, where exactly is the influence of these channels? They go from, I think, one channel to the other. So for example, on stomach channel here, from spleen, uh, orange, to stomach, yellow, uh, there's kind of a, there's a huge area that stomach encompasses before it meets gallbladder again. So instead of just the one line, that whole area is stomach channel. And for me, where these lines are meeting, uh, they're actually merging. So you're, you're, you're getting a crossing over uh, of, these, of these channels, and you're actually getting effects on both, right? So if you're between the stomach and the gallbladder, say, for example, you're going to get point, you're going to get treatment on both of those channels. Same thing in the lower leg. And there are two points along these, um, these areas where they do treat both stomach and gallbladder symptoms. So very useful thing to, to think about. And then uh, lastly, anatomical correspondence, meaning corresponding things on the opposite side of the anatomy. So uh, I as if we were four-legged, uh, fingers and toes relate, hands and feet relate, wrist and ankle relate, right? Multi-joint, uh, multi-bone areas, um, forearm, uh, lower leg relate, the, the elbow is a hinge, the knee is a hinge, right? The hip is a ball and socket joint, the shoulder is a ball and socket joint. Very anatomically similar uh, things we can use there. And so f mapping that out and figuring out what bony prominence relates to what, what attachment of a tendon or ligament relates to what other attachment of tendon and ligament, and then therefore the, which muscles are correlating. Um, most of the time they're using the same action of the muscle, so an external rotating muscle is going to treat an external rotating muscle in the leg. Not exactly, but mostly. Um, so uh, we'll go on with that and get into detail on those. And next. So starting at the beginning. Everybody good so far? Great. First thing we've got are the images. So images meaning meaning these being the images. So imaging, imaging areas, mirroring, some people call it, some people call it imaging, holograms, holographic. Um, any, any term you like is fine. To me, they, they are all interchangeable. What we're basically doing is we're, we're mimicking one area on another. And so some are very easy to see and, and easy to, uh, easy to um, visualize. Some of them get a little bit more extrapolated. So we'll, we'll think about that and talk about that. Um, first and easiest is the extremity image, which is this picture here. So arms relating to legs, and we'll go through this in detail. The second set is the torso image, so that's everything else. So arms and legs are the extremities. The rest of the body from, you know, pelvis all the way to the top of the head, so C1, CV1 to GV20 is going to be the torso. So all of that we're going to map out on an arm or a leg. So that's the torso image. And then we've got an extra, which is the head image, not necessary, but useful. And then we can map the entire head on an arm or a leg. Now these are just three. There are, I think, probably an infinite number of these. Uh, these three seem to work very effectively and very quickly. So the reason why I use them and haven't really deviated from them because they're just so great. Um, I don't really have problems treating. If I do have problems treating, then I will start trying to figure something else out. But usually it's, it's not, a, not a problem. I also use a front and a back image, which is relating front to front and back to back, which is basically an extremity image uh, that's extended onto the torso. So when we get into this discussion, we'll talk more about how that relates. So those are our three basic images. And using those three basic images, we use three basic channel relationships. So the three basic channel relationships are all right here. Uh, first one is the name pairs. So for those of you who uh, haven't been out of school a while, those darn Chinese names, which are hard to remember, Yang Ming, Tai Yin, Tai Yang, Xiao Yin, Xiao Yang, etc. Those name pairs are relating. And so what we're relating is the hand and the foot of the name. 
So Yang Ming arm, Yang Ming leg. Those two are going to treat each other, right? Tai Yang uh, arm, Tai Yang leg, going to treat each other. The nice thing about that is they're very anatomical. They're almost lined up exactly with where the anatomy relates, which is kind of what led to the anatomical correspondence deal that I, I like here. So uh, that relationship are these lines that go across. So here we've got spleen and lung, right? That's Anybody? All at once? Tai Yin, right? And then stomach and large intestine. I already talked about this one. Yang Ming, right? Okay. So those are these lines going across this way and across this way, right? And they're kind of color-coded together, which is nice. Um, so that's the first one, and everybody should know those, hopefully. And if you don't, um, start learning them. Uh, second one is clock opposite pairs. So these pairs are across the clock. Now, the time of the day to me isn't quite so important. The fact that they're on the opposite side is quite important. So, so even though heart is uh, 11 to 1, right, noon basically, and gallbladder is 11 to 1 at night, uh, that's um, midnight. So those are going to relate to each other. Um, the fact that they're midnight and noon doesn't, doesn't make as much of a difference to me, but the fact that they're, uh, that they're opposite each other I like a lot. So, so those are relating very nicely, um, and that's a clock opposite pair, and we like those a lot. And uh, so you can have this nice little chart to rem remind you. Uh, memorizing them is even faster and better. So eventually, uh, when you use it enough, it'll just become memory. And then um, same channel is exactly like it sounds. It is the exact same channel that has the problem. So somebody having uh, back pain in the bladder channel, which is the, the, not the darkest blue, but a dark blue here, uh, you can use points down the bladder channel to treat it, right? We all do that. Bladder 40 for back pain, bladder 60, 65, 63, what have you. Very useful for, for back pain in shoulder and neck. Uh, and so we can use these points to treat things um, farther up the channel. So channel draining is a, is a term I kind of like, which is the idea that things are kind of kind of plugged up higher up in the channel, and then we kind of pull the plug at the bottom and it drains down the channel. So that's kind of a, a, a way to visualize what's happening, and that is going to be on the same side of the body. So we're going to go into those in detail as well. So far, so good. Crosses chart, name pairs, neighboring lines and charts. Thank you, Lisa. So yes, name pairs going this way, clock opposite going like the spokes of the wheel across, right? Okay. And next. Anatomical correspondence. We're going to relate muscles and bones. So um, we're going to figure out what muscles, what bones first. I like to look at the bones first because they're kind of the structure. And then after we have the bones kind of figured out, then we can figure out what muscles are on those bones and where do they attach and how those attachments relate. And we can kind of figure the muscles out. So then that gives us really nice nice ways of, of uh, treating things. Uh, and of course, many people say this, and it's true. Similar tissue uh, treats similar tissue. So bones treat bones, skin treats skin, muscle treats muscle. So most of the time we're treating muscle problems, so we're in muscles. So we're needling into muscle to treat muscle. Uh, if it's a skin problem, though, somebody's skin irritation, skin itch, rash, then we want to thread those needles very superficially to treat the skin symptom. If it's a bony problem, uh, a growth of a bone or a fracture of a bone or something, then we want to needle deep and be tapping actually on bone uh, to get to that. So um, something to keep in mind as you're needling these, these spots. So again, back to the images. So we're going to go into the images in detail at this point. Extremities. We're going to cover extremities. We're going to cover torso. We're going to cover head. And we're going to start mapping them at the joints. And let's see what our next slide's got for us. It's got the whole chart. I'm just going to go up one more. OK. So I'm going to stand up for this part. So we're going to start mapping these at the joints. Uh, I like to look at the joints and kind of count them. Makes a little more sense to me. So let's look at the arm, for example. We've got uh, a wrist joint and an elbow joint and a shoulder joint. So three joints on the arm. So one, two, and three. And the leg is also going to have three. So we're going to have three joints on the leg. So we've got one at the ankle, two at the knee, three at the hip. And those are going to relate just as we see them, as if we're walk watching our dogs and cats walk around. Uh, we're going to relate these exactly kind of as they are. So that hinge joint is going to work very well. That, that wrist and ankle joint are going to work very well. So those are going to relate very directly. Ball and socket and the hip and shoulder are going to relate very well. So that's our first one, is these very anatomical 
correlations, right? Everybody should, should be okay with those. And the second relationship we're using is a, is a reversed version of exactly that. So we're using, again, one, two, and three. So in this reversed version, uh, one and three flip over, meaning now that one wrist can treat hip, right? And elbow still treats knee, that stays constant. And then shoulder is going to relate with ankle. Usually we use ankle to treat shoulder, but you can use shoulder to treat ankle. It works both ways. So these are all going both ways, right? So you can use hip to treat wrist. Not very easy to do, but ideally it's very nice to use that wrist to treat the hip. So as you can see, uh, very quickly, if somebody's got an ankle problem, then you can use a wrist point to treat that ankle, right? That's our first extremity image, very anatomical. If somebody's got a hip problem, you can also use the wrist to treat the hip. And if you just get so lucky that the patient happens to have ankle pain, say on the Yang Ming channel, anyone? Yang Ming? And also hip pain on the Yang Ming channel, you can use one Yang Ming point at the wrist and you get both of them because both images are there all the time. So it's not like you have to pick one and you lose out on the others. They're all there all the time. They're just constantly overlapping and, and, and melding. So, so we can, if we can find that one spot that relates to most of their problems, we can use less needles, which is kind of a beauty. Um, typically, I end up using a bunch of needles, actually. But, but you can if it, if it so turns out, which is, which is very nice. Often it doesn't, but, uh, but sometimes we get lucky. So. And this way, we don't have to use the shoulder to treat the hip. It's very useful because it's anatomically accurate, but we don't need it. So we can use, uh, we can do uh, the wrist to treat the ankle. We can use the shoulder to treat the hip, but we can also reverse those two, right? So these two can reverse, and now the wrist can treat the hip. So we can treat everything basically from the elbow down because you can just reverse the image. And the same thing works on the leg. So uh, first joint, second joint, third joint, that first and third can reverse. So now uh, ankle was treating wrist, right? Very anatomical. And then if you reverse it, ankle now treats shoulder. So no matter where the problem is on this extremity, we can do everything from that knee down, which makes it beautiful for people sitting in chairs, uh, in public health settings, in uh, group acupuncture settings, uh, community acupuncture. This is a very useful type of, uh, type of a technique to use since we can reverse these images and get everything distally. Right, very, very easy for, for us to not have to declothe everybody and get um, very local. Uh, right, this is kind of how it came about actually working in public health. So, next image. Everybody good so far on the extremity? Shouldn't be too confusing there. We're going to get our brains all twisted up here pretty soon. Yep, thank you, Sierra Maria. And torso image next. So, torso image is this image. So, we're going to relate, like I said, we did the extremities. So we're going to relate the rest of us, and we're going to relate the rest of us onto an arm or a leg. I'll start with the arm since it's very visible. So we're going to do the whole head, the whole, the whole torso on the arm, and I'm going to slide over and look at the skeleton for a minute because it's a very nice way of seeing it. So in this version, since the arm is on, we can't do too much with it, but uh, oh, he stretches a little bit. Can it unhook, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very good. So we're going to do this with the arm. I don't know if everybody, can, can that, is that visible for everybody? Yeah. So in this image, we're going to look at the joints again. So wrist joint, elbow joint, shoulder joint. And then we're just, where are the joints on the torso, right? So let's just try to figure that out. The head's nice and solid. Uh, and then the neck is very movable. So that's our first joint. And then we're pretty solid through the chest, not very movable. But the waist is very movable. So that navel L2 level is the next joint bend. And then uh, pretty solid until we get to the actual end of our torso. Uh, ex uh, genitals hanging down externally for men, internally for women, but uh, we'll talk about that. So that's basically where they line up. Now, these images are very bendable, flexible, stretchy. So if we had a stretchy, uh, flexible arm here, we could take this hand and stretch it a little bit bigger to, ma to match the head, right? And we would, you know, stretch this 
uh, forearm down to the navel level, right? So this forearm is going to be as long as the navel, right? So the elbow is going to be the joint that matches that navel L2 spot. And then this bone would actually shrink and just be this lower portion where that, that shoulder joint is going to match this lowest pelvis area uh, of the lower torso. So there's our uh, torso against the arm image. Everybody good so far? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, please type in questions if you have them. Right, that's our first one. So we can do the same thing with the leg. Let's see if we can get a leg off. This one actually, if it rotates around enough, which, let's see if we can do it. And we can. So this one's actually pretty great. And you can really see a nice, a nice relationship here. So it literally is just exactly like this. Uh, again, uh, the head would be a little bit more extended, right? Or the, f sorry, the foot would be more extended to the head. Uh, eye level is going to be about at the knuckles. Same thing in the hand. At the knuckles is eye level, right? And then also the bottom of the foot is like the top of the head. So the bottom of the heel would treat the top of the head. You can do that way. But basically this whole foot is here and the, the calcaneus here is the back of the occipital and the EOP. As you, if you can see it, we're going to line all three of us up here. Very nice. And then we've got uh, ankle. That's our movement. So there's our head movement at ankle, right? And that, that neck area, right, is there's a lot of joints there. There's like, what, seven vertebrae here before we end up at the torso. So we've got to figure out where are those seven vertebrae in here. Is it all squished up there at the movement? Is it, is, does it extend? Uh, personally, I think it extends up the leg a bit, uh, but, but it, it mostly at the movement. To me, the movement is right at the occipital C1, right? And then as we move down the leg or down the arm, right, down the forearm, we're getting these other vertebrae, right? Okay, so there's that. We'll get more to that specifically when we get to, uh, to points that treat these. And so then this lower, lower extremity will treat torso to, again, navel level L2, right? That's going to be at the knee. And then this uh, femur is going to be treating uh, this lowest abdominal area. Again, hip is going to kind of line up with its own hip. So we get kind of a double crossing image there. Okay, so that's leg image, torso, the non-reversed version. So far, so good. Okay. <clears throat> so, one more quick before we twist our brains around and go reversed. Head is hand, wrist is neck, forearm is torso, navel level L2 is at elbow, upper arm is going to be abdomen, and then we've got pelvis, pubic bone at hip joint, uh, sorry, shoulder joint, right? Okay, now we're going to reverse them. So flip over, right? So just like we said before, we've got one, two, and three. So one and three are going to flip, just like that. So elbow is still going to be L2, navel, right? And now we're going to get, so where's, where's the head? So we want the joint to match the joint, right? So, so the joint at the hip, sorry, the joint at the shoulder, right, is going to be neck, which means head is up on to the torso itself. So, so the head is up here. So actually, gallbladder 21 is like gallbladder side headache, which is maybe why it's kind of effective, right? It, and, it's, and it's same channel, so same side. So you can use the same, and it's also the same muscle that goes up there. So there's multiple reasons, actually, for using this point to treat a side headache. Uh, but I digress. The joint is the joint, and the head is up here, right? So head is on the shoulder and torso extended image, right? Neck is going to be at the joint space. Upper torso, chest, navel L2 at the elbow, right? At the elbow. Now this forearm is going to be the lower abdomen. Hip joint or pubic bone is right at the wrist. And now what do you think the hand becomes? Anyone? What do you think the hand becomes? A few typing. Genitals, yes. Good job. Pubis area. Pelvis. It's actually genitals for both 
men, obviously, right, hanging ex externally, but it's also for women. I think the women had external genitals that went up and in. So it's still genitals. It's like, it's as if the, it's as if it goes down, it's as if the image goes down and then comes back in for women. So you can still use the hand to treat the genitals for women. Very interesting. Okay. So that's the reverse of the arm. Are we lost yet? Hope not. So far so good? Okay. We can do the same thing with the leg, though I don't think I can take it off. We'll leave the leg the way it is. So just think of it the other way, right? So same thing, just like with the arm, the hip, again, that ball and socket is going to be the movement. So that's the neck, right? And then everything above that, so the chest, the, the, the head is going to be up onto the torso, right? Onto the hip, onto the pelvis. So it's actually like the pelvis is like the head. So you could do gallbladder 30, you know, something up there. This would be head, right? And then neck is the movement of the joint space, right? Upper torso, right? To navel L2 is still, still knee, right? And then lower leg is going to be lower torso. And where the ankle bends is going to be right at that pubic. And then the foot is going to become the genital, external or internal genital, right? So far, so good? Yes. Okay. D was your question answered, whoever asked about genitals? I believe so. We'll cover it a little bit more in detail. Okay. So those are the two images. And third image, so that was torso, arm, leg. And then there's the reverse. We did both of them. All good, very good. We go. At, we do this a little bit slower in the first seminar, so if you're not quite following, again, go back to that one. Um, and then here's torso image front and back. And I think head is coming after this. Do we skip head? Ooh, don't click that. No. Let's see, there's head, okay. Great, torso image front and back. So in this one, the torso treats itself. So we're going to use our chart for this. What's easier to see, Sam? Is it easier to see this or is it easier to see this? This one. Okay, very good. So torso image front to back. So first we'll start with uh, front to back. So that means that the front can treat the back. And this is very, uh, you can reverse it, but the, but the, the standard image is head treats head, neck, neck, torso, torso, abdomen, uh, lower back. So, and it's exactly front to back. So uh, the CV line treats GV line, et cetera. Uh, same side rib treats same side rib, right? So if somebody's having uh, rib pain, chest pain in the first few ribs, you go to the back and find those ribs and put the needles there on the same side because the rib goes right all the way around, same rib. Uh, if it's pain in the back, which it usually is in the back, then you find the ribs in the front and needle in and around them. We'll talk about specific points and how to needle those. Um, careful of the lungs, right? There's been a pneumothorax recently. Not by us, PTs, right? We're better than that. We don't do that mistake. Okay, so rib same side, CVGV, uh, paraspinal abdominal, that's nice. So you can use these abdominal muscles here on the kidney line to treat the paraspinals right next to the spine. It's actually one of the best ways uh, to treat the bulging disc that goes to the side. And the muscles right, the little thin, tiny muscles that run right along those, right along those vertebrae. We can use the kidney line to get them. It's very effective, very useful, straight front to back. So I often have, will have the patient lying down on their back, face up, right, supine, and I'm palpating that right next to the spine, those paraspinals, those, uh, the, the, the muscles, the hua toes, right next to the, those transverse processes, and I can palpate that, and then I'll needle into the kidney channel uh, right on the other side of it in the front and look for that muscle reaction on the needle a little bit, an achiness, a grabbing. I might twist and wind the fibers a little bit around the needle to get it to grip, and then that'll release that, that muscle very nicely. If it doesn't release it, it means you probably missed it, the angle's a little bit off, uh, might not be deep enough, so just play with that area, should be very effective. And there, we're, we're talking about a half an inch off the midline, so, so 
first first we have to have the CV channel points, boom, to treat the GV, and then we come just to the kidney, the kidney channel, and needle those. I've never really had to go all the way out to stomach channel yet. Um, I use other uh, points, usually bladder or lung points to treat that, so we'll get to all those when we talk about low back pain. Great. CVGV. This is a very effective, very anatomical, beautiful, beautiful image here. Okay, here's a front to back and back to back. So now we're talking about anatomical similarities. Uh, we talked a little bit before GV20, GV1, or GV20, CV1, right? Those are going to relate to each other. More the GV1, actually, sorry to say. Uh, and then um, the cervical is treating the sacrum. We're going to draw, I'm going to draw this out for you. Uh, s sternal notch pubic symphys. Um, I think we have a specific on this. Is this where I start drawing? Can I skip ahead a little bit to see? Yeah, let's draw it out. Okay, we're going to do a little drawing. <coughs> so, I was an artist in a former life. Okay, you can, you'll see by the beauty of my drawing. So we're going to start with the back. Um, we all started out as sperm, right? So actually, this is head and spine, but right. So what do we have? We've got um, a scapula, right? Very nice. Hmm? See my artistic ability. And we've got a pelvis, right? We've got a ball and socket joint, right? Ball and socket joint, knee, foot, right? Foot, sorry, I messed that one up. We're going to take these arms and we're going to go up with them, fingers. Right, so those are, that's our kind of real rough sketch of our bones, right? Super rough. We left out the ribs, right? We left out the base of the pelvis. We left out the sacrum, which I don't want to leave out. Coccyx, don't want to leave that out either. Okay, super simple. So what do we pay attention to? So just like in our skeleton here, the way I like to talk about this is if we move the arm up, we have the leg down. We've got a very nice visual of the furthest away treats itself. So those tips of the fingers and the tips of the toes, the hand and the foot, the wrist and the ankle, the knee and the elbow, right? The hip and the shoulder. So as we're moving, right, across this bony structure, we're moving towards the center. And if this is just our extremity image we just covered, right? Same thing, same extremity image. We're just looking at it on, on us, right? And as we get to the bones in our back, we're at the bones in our abdomen, our, our, our uh, hip, right? So you can see this flat plate and a flat plate. They, they look anatomically related, right? And, and they are. And if you just keep going, everything ends up kind of in the center of us, maybe T8, T789 area somewhere kind of the center. But we're going to relate things here. So we're going to relate this iliac crest and the spine of the scapula, right? We're going to relate muscles that attach in these areas that do the functions that we're looking for. We're going to relate where these ridges end. So iliac crest ends at sacroiliac joint. This is a very solid bone, right? Not very movable, pretty fused. Slight movement happens in that joint space, but not much. This one's very movable, right? Much, much more dexterity going on in this upper body, upper back, upper sliding of the scapula back and forth. So they're not exactly the same, right? So we've got muscles like rhomboids on this inside. Well, there's not a whole lot of muscle in here to relate to rhomboids. So the rom it's more like this is sort of the rhomboid relationship in the quadratus lumborum or the or these erector muscles. Uh, either way, the SI joint's going to relate with the superior angle of the scapula. So things attaching in this area, the thoracolumbar fascia, there's some QL, there's some longissimus muscles, right? The paraspinal muscles attaching down here. Uh, a, bit of, a bit of gluteus attaches in that fascia area. Uh, that's going to be related with this um, uh, levator scapula muscle that attaches right there in that superior angle. A little bit of uh, upper uh, rhomboid attaches there. So, th so those areas are going to relate to each other. 
Now, from here, if we keep going to the center, we end up at C7T1 and L5S1. So those are going to have a very nice little relationship there. And then from there, we can uh, keep going towards the center, right? And so then the vertebrae is gonna, are going to relate as we march towards T8, right? So if somebody's having a lumbar, you can work on the upper thoracic. If they're having upper thoracic, you can work on these lumbar vertebrae, right? So those are going to relate. And the muscles on opposite sides are going to relate. So this is all opposite, right? All opposite sides as we're coming towards the center. And then uh, let's go back to our C7T1 and our L5S1, right? Now we can go the other direction. So what if we go up the neck, up the cervical vertebrae, we go down the sacrum. So sacrum and the cervical vertebrae are going to relate to each other very nicely. And then if we keep going, we've got the coccyx and this entire big skull. So again, like I was saying, these images are kind of moldable, mashable, stretchable, stringable, squishable. So we've got this coccyx down here and the entire skull. Like it's this huge skull, massive bone, and it's these four tiny little fused vertebrae way, of way down here, right? So again, you're at do one and do 20, right? GV1, GV20, boom, relating to each other. So it kind of explains all of these kind of, we've been doing this for a long time, but putting it all together, right? Putting all this imaging together so that it's useful. And it's, and it's extremely useful. It's immediate results. It's instantaneous effects, hopefully most of the time, um, if, we, if we needle it correctly, right? And if we diagnose it correctly, that's the most important part. Got to get the, know where it is before we can do what it is, right? So, so that's related. So, so not, not as anatomically perfect, right? We've got this huge mass of, of occipital here, tiny little bone down here. Going to be very hard to find the spot on that little bone, right? It's going to be, this whole huge thing is going to have to be, it's, it, we're, we're shrinking this much into this much. So it's all very, very tiny down there. So it's going to be really hard to find that spot, right? So we might want to use an image that, that, that expands this. Right, instead of shrinks it, right? Now, if we're going the other way, if somebody's having coccyx pain, now we've got a huge area to look at, right? We've, ex we've taken the coccyx and we've gone, and it's so big that we can just palpate, palpate, palpate. We could put six, eight needles in this teeny little spot on the coccyx is like six or eight area. It's like a huge area, right? So if somebody's having that coccyx pain, you've got a lot of spots to look for, which is very useful, very handy, right? Easier for us, make our life easy. I like, I like easy. Easy's nice. Very good, easy and effective. So that's our back, right? Okay, let's draw it a little more. So again, we went from the hands towards the center. We went from the legs towards the center, right? We related spine of the scapula to levator scapula insertion. We related iliac crest to sacroiliac joint tissue, right? So the tissue is going to relate. The joint, not much joint here, right? So, so for the joint itself, if it's deep into that slight, very subtle movement of that twisted pelvis ligamentous attachment in there, we're not going to get it. No ligaments up here, right? These are all muscles. So muscles treat muscles. Great. If it's the fascia, we're good. If it's the joint space on that SI joint, going to miss it here. We need, a, we need a joint space and we need a ligament. So we're, we've, we've got a trick. So if you, if you know my trick, yay. If you don't know it, we're going to learn it. Okay, later. We'll get to it. So leave it our scapula insertion, right? SI joint fascia area. Okay. And then C7T1, L5S1. And like I said, we can go down and we can go up until we end up at T8 or so. And we can go up the cervical vertebra, and we can go down the sacrum, right? So the four sacral relate to the seven cervicals. And then, again, cox occiput and the coccyx SI, uh, sorry, sacral coccygeal junction there. And then the head, do one, do 20, are going to relate to each other. Very nice, right? It all just fits. I love it. Okay. Now, really quick. Since we're, since we're here, since we've got these bones relating very nicely, right? We've got our extremity image happening there, and then we move on. We're extending that extremity image onto the torso. We've got the torso all relating in and out, both ways. If we look at the muscles a little bit, we've got muscles that go like this, right? Anybody know the names of these guys that go this way? There's a few of them. We're, I'm specifically speaking about the external rotators of the arm. And the... External rotators 
of the leg. Anyone with me online that uh, can give me some uh, some names? Just making sure you're still paying attention. Terry's Preformis. You're paying attention, Don. Very good. Yes, Terry's uh, Terry's minor specifically is doing external. Um, major is doing a little internal, but they're, the location is the same, right? So in that case, we're going to use both minor and major, even though the, the major is doing an internal rotation attaching on the inside of the arm. It's still going to be useful, right? So I'm not trying to figure out which one's minor, which one's major, which one do I needle. I just needle the area, and it's good, right? Infraspinatus, yes, also there. To me, infraspinatus is bigger, right? It goes all the way to this, this SI11 area. Infraspinatus is, a, is the large one. Terry's is the smaller ones out there. Uh, infraspinatus is more like the gluteus, right? Because it's way up here against the ridge. So up here against the ridge, all the gluteus maximus, minimus, medius comes around the side. Medius to me is a little more, more like deltoid. And then this teres major minor external rotating, maybe internal rotating on the teres major. Uh, then you're at piriformis. There's more than piriformis, right? What else is down there? We've got piriformis first. Then there's, anybody know? Going back to our anatomy, right? Gemellus, obturator, the, the Gemelli brothers, right? Gemelli brothers, yes, if you've learned them that way, Gemelli brothers. Obturator, yes, there's an internus, an externus obturator, Gemelli brothers. All of those small, small little guys. There's even a um, quadratus femoris, right? That one goes to the ischial tuberosity down here. So that's, that's actually up here in this area as well. There's, not, there's not really nothing left in the, f in the upper arm, right? So that's really all we've got back here. So no matter what is down here, it's going to relate because there's nowhere else for it to be, right? So, so there we are. So we're here in these teres major minor. There's a little bit of a difference when we get down to that, you know, that, that ischial tuberosity down here, uh, which is hamstring attachment. Um, we're going to look for something that comes up the arm. So we'll, we'll get to that muscle specifically a bit later. So that's the back. Questions on the back area? Questions on the correlations of these muscles and starting to look at some of the, the muscle attachment, correlation of the bones, looking at some of the muscle attachments. Very good. No? All set. So torso image front and back. Front we haven't done yet. So we're going to draw some more. Looks good. SI trick, yeah, sacred iliac joint trick, yes. For more information, see the book or stay tuned. <laughs> I'll look you up later, Scott. All right. Let's get a little higher. Oh, it peels. It's sticky. All right, so front of the torso, let's turn. We should name it. Do we have a name for bones? No name? Okay. I it. You did and you forgot it? Okay, <laughs> let's put a poll out online for names for uh, Elmo over here. Elmo. Elmo? Is that good for everybody? Okay. I think so. Bucky. Oh, Bucky. <laughs> Bucky works. Elmo, Bucky. <laughs> and Okami was Elmo, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so front of the torso. Very similar thing, right? We're going to start with that arm up, leg down, right? And so distal's distal, right? And as we come towards the center, again, we're moving in from both directions. So arm and leg going towards the center. Again, same thing, extremity image, right? We've got hand and foot, wrist and ankle, knee and elbow, hip and shoulder. So these images are just so useful this way. They're, they're just so darn anatomical. Once we hit the chest, now we've got, we've got a, a crest here, but it's really coming around from the back, right? We've got an iliac crest on the back. In the front, it turns into, anybody? Anybody online? What's this front? ASIS. Thank you very much. Scott and Stephen. Yes. ASIS. We're talking the bones first. We'll get to the muscles in a second. Jumping, jumping ahead there, Laura. And, uh, and on the front of the chest, where do you think it is? What do you think relates up here to ASIS? Pause for effect. Acromion, clavicle. Acromion. So the, the acromion process, right? This little, this little finger of bone, right? Coming forward down here, right? Underneath the clavicle, this guy right here. Acromion process, which is the attachment of, everyone know your, know your anatomy? Maybe not. Short head of bicep, right? Long head comes over here to the superglenoid tubercle. Short head of bicep comes to the acromion process, right? Like that. We've got three things attaching here. Coracobrachialis. Right, which is a similar mon a similar function, right? The, the 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 slight internal movement as 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 there's a lift, right? 
coracobrachialis. And last but not least, going on to the chest, supraspinatus is higher, Billy. Pec, but specifically pec minor, right? It goes to rib two, three, and four. So pec minor down to rib two, three, and four. So we've got some pec minor here. We've got uh, short head of bicep. We've got coracobrachialis. Okay, so that's what's going on there. So ASIS and coracoid process. Very good. If we come farther down, there's an AIIS. And I've been struggling a bit with AIIS for a few years. But because of what attaches to AIIS, which is the quadratus muscles, right? Uh, what's going to be the most similar to that is, I think, probably long head of bicep, which comes around to the superglenoid tubercle. So if I'm having people with AIIS issues, I'm looking at superglenoid tubercle and trying to needle through this as it comes in and goes deep to superglenoid tubercle. I'm looking for a spot in here to try to needle into without injuring tendon, right? So careful there on injuring tendon. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for currently. Um, I'm open to options though, right? Okay as we develop this. So we're related here. That's about it for bones. I mean, we've got all these ribs, no ribs, right? So we can't really relate the ribs too good opposite side, but the front and back were great. So we just go front and back on the ribs and we're good. If it's the lowest ribs like liver 14, spleen 13, or like, like a pain, like a little cracked rib down here, the floating ribs get interesting. We'll talk about floating ribs, 12 and 11. Those are, those are that, that 12th rib is a, is a, is, could be a bear, right? Uh, but we've got some tricks. Um, and we'll talk about that and, and, and uh, strategies for that when we do low back uh, tomorrow. So here we are in the abdomen and we're in the chest. So, so not, not too correlating, but, but there could be some. So you could, you could look. If there's some kidney channel symptom happening here on ribs, you could be looking kidney channel right in the abdomen. It's not my first go-to, but if I'm having trouble treating it, I, I, I might check it out. Right, see what we can find. Very muscular, so it would have to be costal uh, muscles. If it's if it's if it's the rib or the joint space of the rib at the sternal sternal clavic uh, sternal costal areas, then I th I don't think we're going to get a whole lot down here unless it's the muscle that's twisting it. Then we release the muscle, release the muscle. Now it might, maybe it lets go. I think you really need to get to the bony ribby spot in the back. Usually we're using the front one to treat the back one actually, but uh, but there it is. So. As we're going towards the center, again, uh, center is going to be, you know, just below the xiphosternal notch, maybe CV15 or 14 kind of area is going to be uh, where we're looking at as the middle, right? A couple other things to pay attention to. Clavicle going this way. Uh, and not much going this way, but if we follow it to the center, pubic tubercle, pubic symphys, uh, sternoclavicular joint, manubrium, right? Xyphosternal notch, right? So those are going to be relating. So joint space and attachment is going to be attachment at pubic tubercle, right? And then when you get to the, the symphys pubis, right at the very center, then right at the very center, just, just like when we were in the back. So, so here at the manubrium at the very jugular notch, xyphosternal notch, uh, boom, those are going to treat each other. Uh, it, it not too common a spot. I, I, I find that tubercle very common. And so I'm using this a lot. Works every time really works every time. It's so effective. And no danger here. Lots of bones. No real danger for, for, for going into the lungs here. So you're real safe to needle all, all around this, uh, this spot here in the, in the sternoclavicular joint. Okay. And then there is something here, though, that is, that is useful to work. There's a ligament, right, going this way. Names, anyone? Names of ligament? So many in the shoulder. Inguinal ligament. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, you guys are great. We are in an advanced class. So inguinal ligament, and we're relating it with subclavius. So tiny little bone muscle that is not doing a whole lot. I think the, the action is lifting the ribs in respiration or something. It's a tiny little thing. Boy, does it work great for releasing this, though. I mean, if you've got somebody with even swollen lymph nodes in this spot, uh, you needle into this very carefully. Uh, we're going against the first rib. And if you can look at this guy, the first rib is huge. It is like an inch wide on, on this particular skeleton. I would say most, most patients are going to have a very fat, flat, wide rib. So as long as you're angled and going up, you're real safe under the clavicle here. So we'll, we'll push around in some people's clavicles underneath and show that angle. Um, and, uh, 
and um, where you want to be safe. We don't want to be going, obviously, perpendicular, none of that. Um, we can go out, and we can go up, and we can go down. We don't want to be going in, right, everybody? Okay, very good. Safety first. No one wanted to have a problem from something I taught, okay? So we want to be, we want to be safe. All right, good. So that's a very nice release for this area. Now we've got artery, vein, nerve, right? Lymph, so much happening right here through this thoroughfare, right? The chi thoroughfare or these, these femoral notches, right? And, and so this tightness uh, can, can be an issue. Now, other muscles around here, somebody mentioned it earlier, psoas and iliacus, right? Sometimes referred to as ilio and so as ilio so as if you will to me the ilio so as is when they merge and come down and attach at the let's get our hip in the right spot here oh, i think this might be rotated uh greater trochanter lesser trochanter isn't it yeah i think am i wrong on that L lesser i'm right oh thank god so uh iliacus against the ilium right? So as coming from the ribs, right? And forward, both of them winding through, very tender. A little bit hard to palpate that so as. You got a real deep, right? But the, but the ili iliac is not so bad. You can just kind of curl in and then just right on that edge. And if that's tender, you know that that iliac is bad. So against the flat of the bone, what do you think? So we already related pelvis, right? And scapula, didn't we? So since we're still relating pelvis and scapula, along the flat, right? Do we have it along the flat on the inside of our scapula? Anybody? Yes? Yes? Anyone? Subscap. Oh, thank you very much. Subscapularis, yes. So you can needle subscapularis through heart one. Ugh, deep. I usually have the arm in an open position. It seems scary, but it's not bad, actually. I thought, I used to think it was scary, and then I did it on a few patients that there was nothing treating this but that, and it, and it worked great, actually. I was very impressed with how well it worked. Um, and, and so that'll get this flat of the bone iliacus. For psoas, uh, it, it, we're going to relate by location on this one. For psoas coming through here, the only other thing we've got in the front here is, we mentioned it earlier, pec minor. So pectoralis minor, to me, is going to be the psoas based on its kind of location more so than anything else. And so, again, careful with pec minor, no needling it into the chest. We're going to needle it out. And if you look, the ribs really do dive away fast. So, uh, so we've got a nice pectoralis muscle there. Let me get to a, a way to show it. So we do have a nice change tape. Okay, back in a flash. So far, so good, you guys? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're good? <clears throat> Any questions out there that we need to answer? 